Good evening, this is your gentleman B970 and tonight I'll be doing the conclusion in this part of looking and reviewing Scott's Bass Lessons and we'll be reviewing Deeper Underground by Jamaraquai. And this is in the sense of where someone would come up to you know, myself and say, can you please play a Jamaraquai bass line? So what I would actually do is try to play to try a way of playing that bass line completely different than everyone else. So it's kind of pulling in that way. And in this kind of attitude of looking at the bass where you know, we're trying to look at Jamaraquai, Paul Turner, Stuart Zender the bass community, uh, people at large, um, in the sense where you've got um, other people that are interested in playing the bass. So what we're doing is we've done a lot of groundwork in the previous video where we show you how to play forget-me-nots. And in this video, we kind of understand that all we've got to do is put the groove onto into a platform and then lay the top notes onto the groove. Now, when Scott's Bass Lessons does this video, it is the best video on the internet. He knows Jamaraquai, he knows Stuart Zender, so he knows that the top notes that he's playing are really, really good. But in that kind of as aspect, when we're thinking in terms of funk, like, like we want the funk in that kind of aspect, <laughs> And then, so that what we do is we supply the funk to our bass lines. And what we try to explain is that not only do we want the funk and we supply, supply the funk to the bass, but we also want the groove. So that's what we do when we look at most of our bass lines. And that helps us play bass lines in a different way than everybody else. And in that kind of process, it can actually help us find notes behind the beat and also look at notes that become ghost notes where you can hear notes, um, but you don't know what they are unless someone shows you where they are on the bass. There's two points that we've got to go through when we're looking at deeper underground. Um, these po points don't actually um, relate to Scott's bass lessons or the bass line because you know his bass line is really perfect the top notes are really perfect it's just something that we look at when we're looking at learning bass lines or trying to find out ways of playing bass lines a different way so that when you look at directors cuts and so on then you're actually using some rules and fundamentals that are kind of akin to the way that some people play the bass. And the best example of that is really someone like Eddie Watkins Jr.'s demo that I try to look and favorite so people can actually find it somewhere in my channel again. So if it's still on the internet, I'll try and update it so you can see it on a front page somewhere. So that demo is probably one of the best demos, demos where you see a guy kind of turning the bass that way. So when we look at we supply the bass, we supply, and we look at a bass line, when we supply funk to the bass line. So when we look at a bass line like that, we can change some of the notes to be slightly lower, and this happens with stage management, TV sound engineers, when you're doing a gig, um, maybe doing a studio demo or an LP or something. Sometimes they get you to change the higher notes to be an octave lower or even lower than that so when we look at um, G flat that's okay but when we look at G we can change that note to a lower G and we get this kind of bass line and again at the ending of this bass line of we supply we can change the low the high D for a lower one and so we get this feeling. So when we play the bass line, and it actually sounds like we're playing the high notes. So sometimes when we play bass lines, we sometimes have to do this to the t top notes that we hear. 
I'm not sure whether it applies to this bass line, but when we play the groove, you will sometimes find that there are high notes in low places and low notes in high places and stuff like that. So all we've got to do now is look at the groove. And again, Scott's bass lessons helps us. It explains that it's D flat minor. <laughs> a really really good version of doing um, bass in that kind of way but again when we're looking at bass we want the groove so what we've got to do is basically find a D flat kind of minor groove and all we do is lay the top notes on that particular kind of groove and so the other thing that we've got to look out for is the very first two, not two notes that Scott's plays. Because what can happen is that if you repeat notes, it can become something that some of the producers don't like. So in this instance, we're playing a whole tone note. So whole tone notes can be really dangerous when we're trying to learn a kind of director's cut of a particular bass line. When we look at C major, we notice that the B and C are whole, whole tones, but there's no semitone in between. So if we've got repeating bass lines, as we explained in the Michael Jackson Get on the Dance Floor, you can sharpen and flatten whole tone note, notes. So we've got that particular way of playing it, which is B to C sharp, and now we can play it C to C sharp, and we get a different feeling. We can turn that around where we play the flat one first, and the sharp one second. So some of these things can actually happen when we're playing bass lines, and so whole tone notes can be like a minefield. When we look in this term of looking at the groove and realizing that we're looking at sharp notes on the whole tone part of the top notes, we can also look at the groove in that sense. And realize that some of the other notes sound really dominant in the ingredients that we've actually made for this um, bass line. So what you can actually do is replace the B note for an E note. And so now we're using a true ghost note where you don't know what the note is until someone shows you the note. So the note that I'm showing you is E instead of B. So you can get this kind of feeling, meaning that when we do an actual bass line, We've got three or four different ways of actually playing that bass line. So we've got all these different ways of actually playing that bass line. So all we've got to do now is kind of work the top notes onto the groove. And um, Line. we're playing the bass line in a slightly different way obviously by playing the bass like this we can't really go into the trilling mechanism again Scott's Bass Lessons does a really good version of how to play the trilling top notes but what it is 
<coughs> with this particular way of playing the bass and playing the bass in the groove is that it gives you the kind of uh, swing to where the bottom notes are in that sense. <laughs> Obviously, at that point, then I would turn the bass round and get it into the funk element and start looking at the bass and trying to find out whether I can now pull the top notes closer to that or push the groove closer to the top notes. And then I'll be playing the bass in a completely different way than everybody else. Some people might actually see the video and say that I'm not playing the B because they won't see my hands going near the B and not realize that I'm actually using a real ghost note where I'm no longer using the B in that particular area. So thank you for watching this video and I'll be back um, very shortly with talking a little bit about Jamara Kwai um, in the history of playing the bass in a different kind of aspect and then eventually in the history of playing the bass after that it would be probably people like John Coltrane um, looking at uh, different aspects of the history of jazz in that sense and then I'll just get back to doing bass covers so thank you for watching this part of the video thank you to all my subscribers thank you you get it thanks <laughs>